If you thought last week's before and after was dramatic, wait until you see the van all spruced up for the car show. We're starting off in the office with a vinyl plotter and two different colors. These graphics were designed by a member of the Sandbar Squad, which is an amazing resource that has helped me along my Sandbar Diaz journey. Once I carefully cut, weeded, and laid transfer tape over all of the graphics, we applied some blue painter's tape to the van to ensure we're laying down the graphics as straight as possible. This is a premium wrap vinyl, which is very different from the vinyl I'm used to working with. It was a lot more forgiving to work with, and I enjoyed the challenge of figuring out how to best utilize it to create these graphics. That being said, I'm still no expert and definitely made some mistakes, but that's kind of the theme of this whole series. Remember, progress, not perfection. At first, I thought adding the silver might be a mistake because I really liked the green on green so much, but once I added the silver stripe, it pulled the silver from the wheels and the chrome trim, and it really just made everything pop, and that's when I knew I made the right choice. We were able to do the driver's side much more confidently and quite a bit quicker. The hardest part, honestly, was trimming the vinyl underneath the rear windows and hiding the ends under the trim. I think we did an okay job once all was said and done. In the previous video, I would removed contaminants from the paint with clay bar and then polished it. So now it's time to seal everything up and add a deep glossy shine with a ceramic coating kit. I applied the base coat and then the gloss coat, buffed away the streaks, and I just worked from panel to panel. The paint has come so far from its blue-green dull haze and is now a beautiful, deep, glossy green. The stripes looked so good, I decided we should go for a scenic drive to Shoto Island. That way we could get some cool photos and videos so that everyone will be excited for the upcoming Kicks on 66 car show. We headed first to the Chain of Rocks Bridge. It's a mile long bridge more than 60 feet above the Mississippi River. For over three decades, the bridge was a significant landmark for travelers on Route 66. While it was closed down in 1968 to automotive traffic, it's now open to the public as a walking and cycling path and a beautiful part of Route 66 history. We puttered around some of the surrounding farm roads for a bit, but I was concerned that the very old tires couldn't handle the broken asphalt and potholes. So we decided to head back across the canal bridge and out of the park. From there, we cruised to downtown Edwardsville so we could see the restored West End service station and Route 66 interpretive center. And remember me mentioning those tires being old? They're 12 years old to be exact, so let's take a look at all these cracks and deterioration. Surprise! Calvin was able to find 12 inch tires after quite a bit of searching, so today we get to replace them. And by we, I mean he. The tire machine is one of the few tools in the shop I personally don't like to mess with, so thank you Calvin for all of your help. Finally, it's time to tackle all the little detail work like rehydrating the dry trim pieces inside and out with plastic and rubber restore, vacuuming, and meticulously wiping down every single surface. And I can't wait to show you this van shining at its very first car show. Okay, now you're ready to go. Are you excited? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> 